Welcome back! We have arrived in the 1931 Prohibition era Hill Valley. And we are still trying to find Doc, although now we've gotten an additional piece of information. According to the newspaper we read in 1986, he got arrested for burning down the speakeasy that was here in downtown Hill Valley. So we're going to have to find out where he's being held and hopefully talk to him. In the meantime, though, we are definitely in familiar territory for those who have seen the movies. This is the town square where the courthouse is. Let's go and check out what's around here. We got a barber shop. Shave and haircut, one bit. Hey, uh, can I get some moose? What does this look like? A hunting lodge? <laughs> I see the game is uh, continuing the movie tradition of Marty asking for things that aren't yet available. Stationer shop. You gonna buy anything? Um, no. Then get out, Bob. People sure are friendly here in 1931. Up and here's the ruins of the speakeasy. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How'd Doc ever get mixed up in that? Rather small building. And there's a law office here. Hello? No solicitors! Whoa. They sure aren't quite as friendly as the lawyers I work for. Let's see, and we got the Bank of Italy, is that what it says? It looks like Italy. How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. Well, at the very least, we didn't get chased out of there on our outside our own accord, so that's good. Um, I gotta mention something right here, I have a confession to make. When I first saw the movie, the original Back to the Future, for some reason, I guess in my mind's eye, I was under the impression that the courthouse was not over here, but it was like alongside the road that Marty was driving down to get to 88 miles an hour. And so when I first saw the game, I thought that this was incorrect, you know, the courthouse being over here on this little side road here. But actually, this is correct, because uh, Doc had to swing down um, quite a distance along that wire to get here between the two posts and the... Uh, get this uh, lightning conducting system set up correctly and just in the nick of time for Marty to uh, go back in time. Uh, and if you look at the model of Hill Valley that he built in 1955 in the movie, it does look like the one here in the game. So the game designers definitely thought through that. Um, and speaking of attention to detail, if you remember the movie, you might have noticed that this uh, Eastern Auto Sales place was, at least in 1955, I'm not sure about 1985, I'd have to look that up, but it was there and it had that same sign that looks like a number 9. Um, there was also a stationer shop here too, I believe it was called Hill Valley Stationers, and there was a bank here, although I think it was the Bank of America, not the Bank of Italy. Um, of course, I couldn't use the Bank of America name here in the game. But at least it was Bank of America in 1985. Because Marty looked at the clock, looked at the clock there when he got back. Uh, I'm not sure about 55 though, but it probably was. Right here we've got a soup kitchen, and this is the same spot where the diner and the uh, cafe and stuff existed at various points in time. Uh, we're not going to go in there quite yet, but we will check it out here soon. But in the meantime, let's check out the police station, because they might know uh, where Doc is. Maybe they're holding him here. Who are you, and what do you want? Can I talk to, uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram! Good night. Well, it looks like he is here, but we can't talk to him the conventional way. But maybe he is through these windows here, and we can find a way to talk to him through this. Doc! <gasps> Marty! Yes! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Indeed. Yeah, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. 
Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. <laughs> Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan. A plan? Right. But what? But what indeed? How are we going to get out of this? Well, we got several options here. Why don't we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. I can imagine. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. You're already talking about the end of the universe. <laughs> I missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Well, uh, I guess that's a relief. <laughs> Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. Yeah. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and gristle. Whoa. Who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. Yeah, that definitely sounds like Edna, all right? Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? Yeah, that is a good point. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? A rocket-powered drill. What? You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great. I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! That sounds like quite a uh, plan. And I can definitely see plenty of ways it could go wrong. Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. That may be true, but I can think of other ways that this could go wrong. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed Just to- Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Well, let's hope so. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. <laughs> Real subtle, Marty. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Well, let's hope so. In the meantime, I'm going to go to that soup kitchen. There's more that we can talk to Doc about, but I'm going to save that for a little later so we won't have all the conversation in one place. Thankfully, unlike the other spots that we try to go into, this one we actually can explore inside. McFly! Uh oh. Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's oh. Mr. Tannin to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, 
So I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. <laughs> if one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? <laughs> Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Aw. Uh... Now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Alright. Well, it wouldn't be a uh, Back to the Future story without a Hey McFly! scene thrown in for good measure. And this one was definitely cool. But it looks like we've run into Kid Tannen, who is Biff's father, and... Artie McFly, who is our grandfather, and from the comments that they were making, it sounds like Artie is Kid's accountant. Well, that's something that we may have to deal with, but for now let's try to see if we can call Doc's house, see where he is. Brown uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Yeah, that is rather odd. Doc just doesn't seem like the type to work as a courthouse clerk. Also, that guy has an awesome voice. Who's this here? Guy. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Oh, come on, Marty. You've messed up so many people's timelines. Without any problem. Well, maybe we'll come back for some soup later, but for now, it's time to find good old Doc at the courthouse. See if we can get him to build this drill for us. We haven't been to the courthouse yet. Let's go through the lawn area here. This is what I mean, changing the uh, direction that you're going in as you change screens can be rather disconcerting. Einstein, there you are. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Oh, such a good boy. I wish my dog were like that. Wait a minute, was that one of Kid's henchmen that just went inside the barber shop? Well, here we are at the courthouse. Let's see if we can track down Doc. Whoa! Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, Harry Callahan. Emmett Brown. But I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Uh-oh. This may be a little more difficult than I th than we thought. Looks like he's not interested in helping us out. Let's try talking to him. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Work? Aren't you supposed to be working on a rocket drill around this time? What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. <laughs> we got something more important for you to do. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Callahan, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. 
your dad tell you that? Every morning. I get the impression that he's not very satisfied with his job, but he's doing it anyway for his uh, father. So Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. Ah, oh, that is miserable. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. <laughs> Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before 8, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Hmm, I get the impression that uh, he does have something to hide. If his father wants to go in, wants him to go into law, and if Emmett is currently starting um, to uh, invest in his uh, scientific interests, then I'm guessing he might want to keep that a secret. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. You're not very convincing. Come on, Emmett. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? <laughs> I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Hmm. Brings back to H. Well, he's mumbling about scientific sounding things. Maybe if we tried asking older Doc about some of those things and get the answer, we might be able to convince younger Doc, or Emmett, as I'll call him from this point onward, that we know something about science. Um, something I haven't mentioned yet is that younger Doc is being portrayed by James Arnold Taylor. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Come on, you could trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! <laughs> if you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! He certainly isn't the easygoing kid that uh, Doc painted him out to be. But anyway, as I was saying, he, um, younger Doc is being portrayed by James Arnold Taylor, who's uh, uh, probably most well known for his voice work as Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars The Clone Wars. And uh, older Doc is actually being portrayed by Christopher Lloyd, which I thought was really cool. He definitely sounds a little bit um, more gravelly in his voice now that he's older than when he played Doc in the movies. But I think he does a fantastic job, and it, he definitely still sounds uh, in tone and spirit like Doc. Um, Marty, in the meantime, is not portrayed by Michael J. Fox, but is being portrayed by someone who does an incredible, incredible Michael J. Fox impression. Uh, of Marty McFly, and that is A.J. Locascio, I believe is his name. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, but he, I think, does a phenomenal job. Uh, and he even screams like Marty. I mean, you'll see in some of the later episodes of the game. But in the meantime, let's see if we can try to catch Emmett here with the tape recorder. Maybe if we catch what he's mumbling about, we can ask Doc about it. Wait, is that... Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I, oh. <laughs> Of course he doesn't know what that is. <laughs> I 
I love it. Alright, so we have to ask Doc what h to the a multiplied by the inverse of a or something is. So let's go ahead and head back to the jail. Here we are. But we'll talk to Doc in the next video.